Greetings YouTube, this is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 bringing you my review of Sir Lancelot Shadow from the Sonic and the Black Knight series. Oh, look at the glory. Look at how awesome. Um, I just found this guy yesterday at a Toys R Us next to an Excalibur Sonic and uh... Let's see, if I could sum up how I looked in a single frame, it would probably be something like this. Yeah, it kind of looked like this. Except instead of a cute little blue cartoon dog, it was a 27-year-old man. Kind of glad no one else was standing in the aisle at the time. Okay, now that that's over, um, let's talk a little bit about the toys engineering and evolution, alright? First of all, it's going to be hard to talk about the Black Knight series without bringing up the original Black Knight Sonic, so let's talk about him first real quick. Alright, the original Black Knight Sonic was one of the first 5-inch figures that Jazzwares made. Um, I already reviewed him, and you know about his flaws, such as his limited hips and the slightly odd-shaped head. Um, now, a lot of people say very unkind thing things about Jazzwares, especially on like 4chan, but the fact of the matter is that Jazzwares apparently listens to feedback from its customers and makes improvements with every generation. Like this is one of the original 5 inch figures, and when we move on to the supersonic figure that uses the engineering from last year's generations launch, there were lots of improvements, like hips that go the right way, a hollow head, and um, bicep and knee swivels and this was a huge marked improvement the problem being that it's a little bit floppy again Jazzwares heard our pleas and improved again so I would like to discuss the new joint system used in the Lancelot and Excalibur figures they actually are very similar to Reveltech joints I'm not sure if you can hear those clicks, but there are clicks in there. So in principle, these clicks um, help the figures maintain more poses. You just have to make sure which way they bend. And since um, they're, they're, they're really built like Revoltech joints, so you can actually move them. And they, they have the swivels as well as the clicks, so you have a... You have a, um, a practically limitless range of motion for these guys. Um, the only flaw is that some armor kibble gets in the way, so you can only get a couple of clicks out of them. Like, if they had uh, cut a little divot here and here, then you could probably get a 90 degree bend as it stands. That's about as far as it goes. Let's see? If I can get the foot out of the way, you can see it's silhouetted. But, but really, it's, it's very nice. Um, yeah, uh, clicky, Revel Tech style joints to make the figures hold poses better. I definitely approve of that. That's uh, yet another improvement. And it has a few little bugs to iron out, but I think that it really helps. Now, the sculpting. Oh, the sculpting. It is glorious on this guy. Um, you can see every little detail of Shadow's, uh, Lancelot Shadow's helmet. You see the bolts and rivets that hold it together. That's the strap that holds it on his top spine. The armor. He has little armor skirts and his tail sticks out the back. Um, everything. And, and it has this really nice metallic looking paint job that just, it just really, really makes everything shine. They got every little detail they could cram on this guy. And the mask is articulated so it can move up to show Lancelot's face. And if you think it sticks out a little too far, it's actually removable. Of course I actually like it in there. It's, uh, it's a really nice fit. It goes right into the holes. There's Unlike with those, um, unlike with what happens with Sonic's uh, shades on his Free Riders figure, um, they it fits perfectly, moves easily. It's it's just 
it's perfect. Um, so as you can see, one hand is sculpted to hold things, and what would he hold if not for his mighty accessory, Arundite. Arundite is uh, Lancelot's default sword in the Sonic and the Black Knight game. And, oh my god, is this thing glorious! I mean, the Celtic swirls, I, I think there's supposed to be Celtic swirls on this thing somewhere, but I don't care. This thing is so amazing! I, I haven't seen an American toy with an accessory sword this nice. Ever. I'm not saying that since some arbitrary time. I'm saying this is the first time I've seen an accessory sword like this. I mean, Japanese toys have these things all the time, but American? Uh-uh. This is solid, hard plastic. It is not flexible or rubbery. In fact, I once almost poked myself with this, trying to get it in and out of his grip. It's, um, it's very hard. It's, uh, very pointy and a kid could genuinely put their eye out. Awesome! Now you gotta compare to uh, Caliburn, of course, being the other majorly nice accessory sword. And uh, in terms of length, they're about the same. Uh, where in, in uh, Sonic's hand, Caliburn would appear to be something like a claymore, while Arundite is like a mighty great sword or something like that. I mean, uh, in terms of length, Arundite's not that much longer, but in terms of sheer mass, um, I, I could probably pick up and swing Caliburn in real life, but um, I would probably not even be able to lift Arundite. That, that's what I'm trying to get at. If this is a full-size sword, it would be a mighty piece of steel that not many people would be able to, to lift, let alone swing. So how does Lancelot look holding the sword? Well, you can put it into his grip pretty easily. You just push it in there, and then you tuck it behind his pinky for a secure grip. And uh, the sword is actually so heavy that, that it kind of overcomes the bicep swivel and falls to the ground. But you got to remember, Lancelot didn't really hold the sword like this very much in the game. Lancelot usually reverse wielded his sword like this. And you can do it just as well. I mean, the sword is huge and heavy and throws the figure slightly off balance. But if you get him standing just right, then you can pull off some really nice poses with the sword. I mean, you can have him running with the sword behind him. You can, you can have him holding the sword in front of himself in an, in an attack-ready posture. I mean, this is... The, the possibilities are, are really sky-high with this guy. This is really a step up. Um, I'm just very self-conscious about which way I'm bending these joints now because I'm afraid to break the leg like what I found on, on the Excalibur Sonic I got. Which is unfortunate. I wish I didn't have to worry about this, but... I don't know if breaking is a common problem with these guys, but... It happened to me, and I'm scared now. So it's always going to make me handle this figure with kid gloves, but it looks great. I'm having a little bit of a hard time standing him now because I'm doing it while looking in a camera viewfinder, and my bed isn't a perfectly flat surface, but I, I had him standing on a box all night, and he, and he stood proudly. It's a, it's a very great standing figure. So that's Lancelot from Sonic and the Black Knight. It's really awesome. I gotta give it an... Well, for slight... The sculpt is a 10 out of 10. Our articulation is wonderful. I'm gonna have to take a couple points off for not having a lot of elbow clearance and for the bicep swivels being a little loose, but I give him a solid 8 out of 10. This is an extremely nice figure. Um, he, he is highly recommended. If you can find these guys in stores, I would totally recommend you get one. Um, now, remember, I'd hate to actually mention this in the review itself, but uh, 
Um, if you want to see me do a review of the Excalibur Sonic figure, um, I need someone to get me a Revel Tech joint. A 6mm, preferably gold. If any of you know where I can get one of those, please contact me. Um, although it, it'll probably be irrelevant by the time you're watching this video, depending on how long it is that you waited to see it. But yeah, that's, that's the basic story behind why Excalibur Sonic is not part of this review. However, Lancelot Shadow is awesome, and this is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001, signing off.